Hello, and welcome to another American Photo Treks post processing video. And I realize that uh, I'm about a week late on getting this one posted, but I had tried a couple different times and my, uh, my Adobe F bridge kept on crashing. And I learned that that was, I thought it was something wrong with my computer. I kept trying different things. And I learned there was actually a glitch in the latest update. So I got a new update and everything's working fine now. So we'll go ahead and do it and we'll get right into it. And if you haven't done this before, um, that's me right there. And every time I touch a key or a key spec, I mean, keyboard, you'll get, uh, you'll see where I'm, what I, I'm touching at any particular time with uh, the keystroke right there. And you can follow along with me. And while we were out, we, we kept advising you guys to bracket. And now I'm going to show you what to do with those bracketed images. And in my case, I bracketed five images, about a third of a stop in between, or two thirds of a stop in between each. And this is what it resulted. These are my images of the maroon bells, just as we were getting a little alpine glow on the peaks. So that's the image I'm going to process. And to do that, I'm going to highlight all five images, just hold down the shift key and highlight all five and then double click. What's going to happen, it'll take us right into camera raw, which is kind of my favorite place to do edits. And I'm going to edit all of these the exact same way because I'm going to combine them later. So I'll click this little thing right here that will say select all. So now everything uh, every change we make to this photograph will be made to all of them. And I'll start off with the white balance and um, I'm betting, yeah, that's, sometimes I just want to look. I, I'm going to like the white balance right about where it is. I might want a little bit warmer just because that's the way I remember it and a little bit prettier. And that'll apply that to all of them. not going to do any of these sliders right here because I'm going to leave every one of these way they are. Then I'm going to apply some sharpening just to about right about 80 right about here and and if you recall now these are raw files raw files are not sharpened before go to about 1.8 then I'll hold down control or excuse me alt and move the mass so I only apply the sharpening where I want it applied I only want it on the hard edges, so that way it doesn't look over sharpened. I said ISO 200, don't really think I need any noise reduction, but I will enable a lens profile, which as you see as I turn it off and on, counts for, uh, helps take care of any vignetting and also some um, any uh, distortion. So make sure that those settings are applied to all of the photographs say OK and then we'll open images and that should open them in Photoshop. Alright so now all my images are open in Photoshop and as you'll see this one which is overexposed by one and a third stops just really blown out all over the place and I usually just don't find any use in including a photo like that as part of my HDR process. Uh, Usually it winds up just making everything too harsh. So I'm going to throw this one out, just close it. So this one's good, still has some of the highlights that I need. And then we'll look at the others. So I'm going to use a program which is what's called a plugin. I move this over here with Nick Effects. I think they're wonderful. I use them all the time. And they have an HDR Effects Pro 2. Excuse me. And um, that's, I'm going to use the HDR FX Pro 2 and I'm going to merge my images using that. And I just click merge multiple images right there. And that's going to open it up. I'm going to add my open files, click merge dialog. And that's going to get me started. And we're waiting for that. All 
right now it's asking me which image that I want to pick to kind of be my base image for any ghosting of anything that went on, any, maybe any ripples in the water, anything like that. This one's fine. No major images, but let's say you've got somebody moving or something like that. You can kind of pick the one image that um, you want him still at and then it'll try and work around that. Sometimes it works real well, sometimes it doesn't. So now it's going to give us some choices for HDR. And that's what it's going through right now. Okay, and it took a little time to put those together, but now it's given us some choices. This is the default one. This is the balanced choice. This one's what you call deep. Deep 2. Detailed. Detailed 2. Bright and dark. And I'm going to choose the one I usually choose which is balanced. And I know this doesn't quite have the, quite the pop and impact as deep and deep too, but I'm going to um, give it that in, pop and impact, but I'm going to give it with my own way of doing it. Because see how what it's done to the uh, sky up here and some of the reflection and the harshness and I don't like that, I want more control. So I'm going to click Balanced, say OK, and I'll show you how I then get some of that pop without the negative haloing and other things that can happen by using too aggressive of a compression. So there it is, and now I can close out those other images, don't need to, them right now. I'm going to leave this one open, and I'll show you why. Because I don't really like what it's done to my sky here at all. Notice they're very similar. So it's one of the things that's a quick giveaway that your picture is HDR is if you've got a real crappy sky. So I'm going to do some of my edits and later on I'm going to add in a more natural looking sky. So first it's time to do some edits and for this I'm going to go back to my Nick Effects, choose Color Effects Pro and open this. First thing I'm going to pick is Skylight Filter. And this just gives it a little bit of warmth. See, just a little bit of warmth. Not too much. Don't want to do anything too much. And there it is. And then, Tonal Contrast. This is what brings out a lot of the details. But see what it does to that sky? It's terrible. But it does make everything else look pretty cool, right? Gives it a little bit more detail, looks a little bit more natural the way our eyes remembered it. Something along those lines. We'll look at Pro Contrast too. Something tells me that's going to be too much. Hmm? Maybe not. It's actually okay. Now, I'm not looking at this guy right now because it just it's too bad. I'm not going to use it, so I'm just looking at everything else. So that'll be good, and I'm just going to click OK. So there's a pretty good HDR image of the maroon bells there at sunrise. You got a little bit of the alpine glow, you got a little bit of this. But again, this sky is simply unacceptable. So I'm gonna flatten the layers here, but then I'm gonna create, so, so I went to layer, flatten. I'm gonna go over here and just right clicked, and hit duplicate layer. So that just created two layers. Now I'm gonna come over here, hit select all and edit 
copy. So I just copy this whole picture, come over here and hit Control V, which pastes this picture right here. Now I want to put this layer in the middle, so I'm just going to grab this background copy layer and move it up. Now I'm going to use my selection tool here. This one's called the quick selection tool. And I'm just going to select the sky. And because of the way the maroon bells works, it's about as easy to do that as you can possibly be. But you know what? One thing I'm going to do just in case, I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to select all my layers here by hitting Control, select them all. Then I'm going to go Edit, edit Auto Align Layers. And that's just in case anything got moved around during HDR or anything like that. I want to make sure these layers are lined up perfectly. They probably are, but better safe than sorry. Okay, now they're lined up perfectly. Now I can uh, work on my background copy here, go back to the selection tool, and just select the sky. And now that means that any edits I do or anything will only be done on the part that's selected. Well, actually, I want to create a layer mask that excludes that includes everything but the sky. So I'm going to say select inverse and let's see what happened there. Now I've selected everything but now I just click this right down here and this says add layer mask and it'll add a layer mask based on my selection. I click it and boom. Watch what happened to get, you know now I've made a layer mass that includes everything but that sky I hated. Now I've got the good, nice, clean sky that I like from my regular image. And that's all I really want. So now I can go to that regular image and maybe do some adjustments here on the levels. Maybe get that sky looking more color I'd like. You can see, the darker you go, you still get some of that junk in there, which I'm not too happy with. Right about there, I'd say. Okay, now I just layer, flatten image. Of course, it still doesn't look that great up there. I got a bunch of junk up there. There was some clouds, so I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to get my little bandage tool there. That's what I call it. And look at, I had a big spot somewhere on a sensor or something. Got to get rid of that. And you can see from this, this is pretty sharp. And I still got a bunch of junk in my sky, but I got one more trick to get rid of that. I'm going to again select just my sky. Uh, now I'm going to use this Nick Effects Pavesa 2. And it has a thing here called structure. And for sky, you don't necessarily need a lot of structure. So I'm just going to zoom that down. That just got rid of a lot of grain and all kinds of other junk. It was here in the sky, and again, I can kind of adjust the brightness, get a little better color. And there we go. Kind of see what I did there. And a little better sky. Select, deselect, layer, flatten. And the last thing now is kind of, I really like how you can see all of this the, the bottom of the lake here and it's such a good reflection great detail you could print this out really big and it would the, the detail would just pop so now I'm going to go to my image and adjustments and I'm gonna look at my levels and I'm gonna even them out a little bit just give it all a bit more of the kind of color and pop that I like. And I do adjust with levels quite a bit. I like it. And there we go. And that's actually a pretty darn good finished image of the Maroon Bells at sunset. I'm sure there's more stuff that we could do, but 
that's kind of a basic idea of why we're telling you to bracket out there and how to use those brackets to create a single image from multiple exposures. So that's it for this particular video. And I appreciate, really appreciate you guys joining us on what was probably our most ever, most fun ever American photo treks. And it was quite the adventure, wasn't it? And I hope you guys got some great shots. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. All right, thanks.